Well, thanks a lot for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on Eon this Friday morning. This broadcast is coming to you from Constitutional Hill today, really as we launched the five-year crusade to end violence against children in South Africa. It was an initiative, and of course, this is following the statistics that came about in 2015, really revealing about how much exactly is being lost in South Africa, especially when it comes to the economy as a result of violence against children. So in the hope to really raise awareness against the scourge and perhaps bring about effective change. We're going to be deliberating such conversations this morning to kick off our discussion. Joining me right now is the CEO of Save the Children South Africa, who is Gugu Ndebele. Gugu, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you very much, Faith, for having me. Now, the statistics are very alarming in itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, the figure in itself, 238.5 billion rand lost to South Africa as a result of violence. But yeah. let's bring it down to the home base. Absolutely. What do those figures mean exactly? You know what the statistics mean is that, in fact, if you, if you invest early, yeah. in preventing violence you'll save this amount of money so maybe you'll be able to have free education that people are talking about mm -hmm. you'll be able to have better education that people are talking about but even as a taxpayer you will know that your money is going towards the upliftment of, of your society yeah mm -hmm. and of course I mean why does it seem as though we're not necessarily winning this war to end the violence I mean you've got a five-year yeah. crusade that has been launched right now mm -hmm. but why does it is it because there's lack of awareness or is it because there's lack of community engagement yeah. when it comes to the issue there are a number of reasons I think the first one is that violence against children is, is very hidden because it happens in the home, it often happens in spaces that are safe for children, and generally people don't report violence as well as they could. And the victims themselves, who are children, are not empowered enough to access institutions so that they report. But secondly, I think as a society, we've become numb to violence against children. So it's, it's normal. Desensitized to the issues exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. It's desensitized. The third thing is that we don't invest a lot of a lot of energy and time in preventing it. We're spending a lot of money in trying to mitigate the effects of violence against children, setting institutions up, etc. Mm. And the last thing for me is that we're not working together as civil society, as government, as business people, as communities to ensure that we prevent violence. Because if we cover all of those bases, we'll be able to make a dent. Yeah. In, in violence. But I mean, I'm just looking at the figures that was just put, presented mm. before me for those individuals that don't necessarily know. I mean, it's absolutely alarming. Mm. 7.2, for example, percent of South African children will suffer from sexual violence alone, mm. right? Yeah. And we're going to 26 percent of them will suffer from physical violence yeah. in itself. Yeah. So the figures are there. That's basically yeah. saying that community members still believe yeah. that, or some community members still believe that being violent against a child mm. is not such a bad thing. Mm. So is it, do we know exactly where this is coming from? Is it coming from more affluent communities? Is it coming from disadvantaged communities? Mm. Is there such a categorical breakdown of these uh, statistics? The, I suppose if there's one thing that's not discriminatory is violence against children. It happens across all the sectors. It happens in middle income co uh, communities, poor communities. Of course, where there's poverty, yeah. the likelihood is higher because there's desperation in families and in communities and there are no institutions that are the safety nets. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the home, for instance, we, we deal with cases where um, fathers come back home, they're frustrated, they didn't get employment, and they take it out on children, the frustration on children. But it's not only confined to poor communities, it's, it's actually across. Yeah. And the thing about violence is that people think it's only physical violence that, that we're talking about. We're also talking about emotional violence. We're also talking about children experiencing violence in the home. All of those things affect how the child grows up, affect the prospects of the child, and ultimately affect the economy of the country. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the mm. sexual violence aspect of the mm. children, because it's a growing phenomenon yeah. in this country. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not on the decline, it's actually yeah. on the increase. Absolutely. When we're looking at that, the last conversation was held is that we needed to have some form of a, a registry to keep track of those who are sexual mm. offenders, especially yeah. those that are pedophiles yeah. or sexual offenders against children, etc. Mm. How are we faring with to keeping track of that because I can imagine uh, we need to know who is um, an offender or a sexual mm. offender against yeah. children within my community so mm. I know what I'm dealing with and yeah. be empowered as a parent. Yeah, I know that the, the Department of Social Development actually was looking at uh, revamping their systems yeah. because I think they found out that the, the, the system wasn't work as, working as well as, as it should. But the, the register is at the end of the, of the chain. 
you, we need to start by enabling young people to be able to report violence. Sometimes when they go to police stations, our police people are not equipped to deal with those challenges. Mm. But we know that the de Department of Community Safety is training policemen, for instance, to be able to deal with victims of sexual violence so that young people are not doubly victimized. But then you get to the court system where sometimes they are not hidden because you need to, they need to be anonymous. Yeah. They get intimidated. They see the perpetrator who is looking at them. Who is usually so, a family who's, member. Who is usually an a family member. An uncle or father absolutely. or an aunt. Or... And so they get hidden. So, you, you, so that person never gets convicted. So the register you know, won't necessarily work. So it's that chain for us that needs to work. Ensuring that they've got access mm. to safe spaces so that they can report. Ensuring that they are facilities and processes, psychosocial processes where they are able to be counseled along the process, ensuring that our policemen are sensitive to those cases and ensuring that the justice system is quick and is confidential and is safe for children. You know, this conversation as we're speaking right now is making me, thinking, is making me think about the Child Protection Act. We've got yeah. this wonderful piece of policy yeah. that is sitting down yeah. and um, articulating all the, the, the sort of the know-hows in yeah. terms of how to protect the rights of yeah. children or how to defend um, uh, children, when, especially when mm. it comes to such instances. But unfortunately, once again, what you're raising, the issue mm. of implementation, that yeah. we can have this wonderful piece of legislature, yeah. but so long as we're not able to implement it, yeah. what is the point of us even talking about it? Yeah. So th then when it comes to the implementation fact, what are you guys been doing on your part to ensure that pressure has been put on, yeah. that they can implement effectively? You know, I think the amazing thing about that aspect, in fact, is this day. Because we've been very fortunate that one of the departments and the provinces that have raised their hand to say, we know it is a great problem, mm. we know that there is a lot that we need to do, is actually the Department of Community Safety. And they said to us, we need to work together with you so that you help us understand how to work with children but the realities also, now. and the realities yeah. and the realities but also what it is that we need to fix within the system with all the resources that we have mm. so that we're able to make all of these things come together and they're here they will talk to you about the things that they are doing to Absolutely. ensure that and they said we want to say it publicly that we'll work together to ensure that children are not further victimized well definitely we will be extending that conversation with the department of community safety really looking at how is it that we can bring policy down to the ground Absolutely. actually implement effectively so thank you so much for joining us there really giving us a, a sort of insight in terms of exactly what are we dealing with when we're talking about ending violence against children in south africa this conversation is going to be extending until 8 30 so do join us speaking to gugun debele who is the chief save the children south africa ceo do stay with us here on sunrise we're going to take a quick break there after we continue with more shortly after stay with us warning this program is an advertorial Opinions and views expressed in this production are not necessarily the same as those held by ETV. Every day, men and women in this great country wake up and set about building their dreams. They are the lifeblood of our land. They are the workers. And this is Workers' Prayer. Good morning to all of you and welcome to our Workers' Prayer once again. We are going to share with you a very strong testimony. You know, before joining the spiritual therapy, Vuyiswa had uh, depression and she was about to uh, get divorced.